Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be using the multinomial theorem to find the number of distinct terms in this expansion. We have x plus y plus z plus w to the 10th power, and we're going to be finding the number of distinct terms. So I'll be presenting two methods. Here's the first method. So for the first method, I'm actually going to turn this into a binomial expansion by using substitution, obviously, right? So let's call this A and let's call this B. So I have four terms, but right now I have two terms, which is nice because we know how to deal with binomial theorem, right? Hopefully. Now I have A plus B to the 10th power, which can be written as A to the 10th power plus 10 choose 1, which is 10, times A to the 9th multiplied by B, and then 10 choose 2, A to the 8th, B squared, so on and so forth. And this is just going to end in b to the power 10. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to back substitute, go ahead and replace a with x plus y. So it looks like x plus y to the 10th power, and then 10 times x plus y to the 9th power, multiply by b, which is z plus w, and then with 10 choose 2, I can do the same thing pretty much. It looks like x plus y to the eighth power multiply by z plus w and finally at the end we're going to get z plus w to the power 10. Okay, great. So this is the expression that I have in terms of x and y and since we're going to be getting different terms from each of these uh, terms, so kind of like a sum, this is a sum and there are terms in it, but those terms will produce more terms and they're all going to be distinct because of the, the way the powers are. So we can just look at the number of terms that come from each of these. So from this one, how many terms we're going to get from this one, how many terms we're going to get, so on and so forth. And then we can just add those up. All right. So for example, x plus y to the 10th power is going to give us 11 terms. As you know, if you have, you know, x plus y to the nth power, this gives you n plus one terms, right? Because it goes from n choose zero to n choose n. Okay. So it's just one more than the power. So we're going to be getting 11 terms, but we also have to consider the z plus w. We have z plus w to the zero power. That's going to give us one term, which is the zero power, which is one. But I want to write it as a sum of products because I want, I'm going to use the sigma symbol. Let's see how this goes. Okay. X plus y to the ninth power. Now, by the way, this coefficient 10 doesn't really matter because it doesn't change the number of terms. So x plus y to the ninth power is going to have 10 terms. And z plus w is going to have, this because this is first power, it's going to have two terms. And I'm supposed to multiply those because, now think about this, x, y, z, w are all different. And we're kind of multiplying a, you know, sum with 10 terms uh, by a sum with two terms, right? Okay, that's going to generate uh, 10 times two terms. And then plus, I'm going get, to get 10 choose two, but that doesn't matter. It's going to give me nine times you know, z plus w, this should be z plus w squared, by the way. So that's going to give me three terms. And all the way to the end, I'm going to be getting one term from x plus y to the power zero and 11 terms from z plus w to the 10th power. Okay, great. So we're going to be evaluating the sum and that's going to give us the number of terms. How do you evaluate this? Let's go ahead and take advantage of sigma. I can just write this as k equals one through 11. And to express the, um, you know, to express the uh, 11 in terms of k equals 1, I'm just going to write it as 12 minus k. So for k equals 1, my first factor is going to be 11. And my second factor is going to be 1. So that's just going to be multiplied by k. Let's go ahead and check this out. The last term for k equals 11 gives me 1 times 11. So it works. Okay, this is what I need. Let's go ahead and expand it. We can write it as k equals 1 through 11, 12k minus k equals 1 through 11, k squared. As you know, with the sigma symbol, we can just separate them. So now this 12 can go out, and then I can write this as k equals 1 through 11k minus k equals 1 through 11k squared. Great. So 12 is just going to be a you know coefficient here, multiply by the whole thing, but what is the sum? 1 through 11k, which is just 1 through 1 plus 2 plus dot dot dot, all the way to 11. And that is the formula is 
n times n plus 1 divided by 2 for that one. For the k squared, the sum of squares, the formula is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. Let's go ahead and simplify this. 2 goes into 12 6 times, and then 6 goes into 12 2 times. Okay, so I'm getting 66 times 12. Let's go ahead and put it up a little bit so they can see it. And uh, 46 times 11. Okay, great. Now, 66 times 12 is going to become 792, and this is going to be 506, and the difference is going to be 286. So this expression has basically 286 terms. And this brings us to the end of the first method. Okay, not to the end of the video. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. Now, the second method is a little different, but it's basically counting the same thing. So we're going to use the multinomial theorem here for this one. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So I have four terms uh, that are being added and I'm raising it to the 10th power. And this can be written as follows. I can just write this with sigma. Now the terms that are gonna come from here are basically going to be having a coefficient of 10 factorial divided by A factorial, B factorial, C factorial, and D factorial. And I'm gonna tell you what those uh, A, B, C, D values are. So we need four numbers that add up to 10. So it could be like 2, 2, 2, and then 4, or any other, uh, you know, arrangement. And uh, as long as a plus b plus c plus d is equal to 10, uh, this is going to work. And this will be multiplied by, of course, powers of x, y, z, w. And they're going to be like x to the power a, y to the power b, z to the power c, and w to the power d. So that's the multinomial theorem. So the question is then, how do we count the number of terms? Well, the number of terms are basically going to be coming from here because we have the ABCD as power. So the question is then, what are the non-negative, or I should say maybe number of, number of non-negative solutions to this equation, right? So how do you find the number of non-negative solutions to this equation, A plus B plus C plus D equals 10? Well, we can use what's called stars and bars. So we do need three dividers, or you can call them bars if you want. And we do need 10 stars. Let's say these are the stars. They don't look like stars, so let's make it more like stars. So let's go ahead and draw 10 stars. They don't all have to be there, by the way, because they're going to be distributed. So in other words, we have four spaces uh, that are separated by the bars, and I have uh, 10 uh, stars that I need to distribute, right? So it's kind of like uh, I have 13 terms and I have to arrange them or I can just pick the locations for the bars first and then the stars can be arranged anywhere else, right? That's just going to determine how this works or you can think about the stars first but in any case it's going to be like this. We have 13 terms so it's going to be like 13 factorial divided by 10 factorial and 3 factorial. And this can obviously be written as 13 choose 3 as well, or 13 choose 10. It's the same thing. And if you evaluate this, it's going to look like 13, 12, 11, and 10 factorial divided by 10 factorial times 3 times 2. We can go ahead and simplify this. And that's going to give us 3 times 2 is going to be 6. That's going to go into this twice. And it's going to be the same as 26 times 11, which is equal to 200 and 86 terms. And this brings us to the end of the second method and to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.